with a love like that, you know you should be glad. With a love like that, you know you should be glad. Yeah, yeah, those are the Beatles, those are, and this is Beatleland, formerly known as Britain, where an epidemic called Beatlemania has seized the teenage population, especially female. Some of the girls can write, and they belong to the Beatle fan club. The Beatles sound like insect life, but it's spelled B-E-A-T, beat, and these four boys from Liverpool with their dish mop hairstyles are Britain's latest musical and, in fact, sociological phenomenon. They have introduced what their press agents call the Mersey sound after the River Mersey on which Liverpool stands. And though musicologists say it is no different than any other rock and roll, except maybe louder, it has carried the Beatles to the top of the heap. In fact, they have met royalty, and royalty is appreciative and impressed. Wherever the Beatles go, they are pursued by hordes of screaming, swinging juveniles. They and their press agents have to think up all sorts of ways to evade their adoring fans. Thousands of teenagers in every city and town stand in line all night to get tickets for their touring show. Girls faint when the tickets run out. The other night, the Beatles played Bournemouth, the South Coast family resort, and Bournemouth will never be the same. Reporter Josh Darsa talked to the Beatles in their dressing room. What has occurred to you as to why you've succeeded? Uh, I don't know, really. You know, as you say, the haircuts. We didn't think they were a gimmick, but everyone else said, Oh, what a gimmick. What is the mercy sound? How does it differ from other rock and roll and pop? Uh, it doesn't, really. It, it just happened that... All of a sudden, uh, hundreds of rock groups, all from Liverpool, made records, and it was a bit more like the original rock and roll than the stuff they've had over the last few months. Hi. Hi. So people decided suddenly, you know, there's all these Liverpool groups, so they call it the Liverpool sound and the Mersey beat and everything else. And the Nicky Cuff all thing. Yeah, but it's yeah. just, yeah, it's just a way of classifying it. But I don't think the music's very different. Do you have any fears that your public eventually will get tired of you and move on to a new favorite? Well, they probably will, but, you know... Do you ever think about it? Depends that? how long it takes for them to get tired. Yeah. Don't it? it? It's it's stupid to worry about things like that, because, I mean, it could... It's not worth could missing your sleep for, is it? No, bad No. It but could, it could happen think, tomorrow, maybe? and it could, you know, we could have quite a run. This is... Really we just hope we are going to have quite a run. The Beatles, who started their act at the waterfront pubs of Liverpool, are now clicking off $5,000 a week in one-night stands. They have sold two and a half million records. They lead the hit parade. They get the biggest fan mail on record. They have inspired the sheepdog hairdo. They are also credited with having saved the sagging British corduroy industry. And besides being merely the latest objects of adolescent adulation and culturally the modern manifestation of compulsive tribal singing and dancing, the Beatles are said by sociologists to have a deeper meaning. Some say they are the authentic voice of the proletariat. Some say they are the authentic heart of Britain in revolt against the American cult of pop singers represented by Elvis Presley and the long line of his British imitators. Some say the Beatles represent authentic British youth, or British youth as it would like to be, self-confident, natural, direct, decent, vital, throbbing. The Beatles themselves seem to have no illusions. They symbolize the 20th century non-hero as they make non-music, wear non-haircuts, give non-mercy. 
And meanwhile, yeah, 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 the fan mail keeps rolling in, and so does the money. This is Alexander Kendrick.